My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Transport Fever 2 and Japan as we continue our map, the Gorges of Shikoku, which is available on the Steam Workshop. Should anybody wish to have a little try themselves, there is a link to the map in the description of each and every video. So if you're interested in having a look yourself, then you can do so. Today we're starting at the station by Iwanomori. That serves not only Iwanomori itself by delivering the goods for onward shipment via the road vehicles, but also we have the food production plant here. And if you remember last time out, we removed the truck delivery line that was bringing the rice down from the mountains and we replaced that with a train service. That is making us a decent amount of money and working quite well. So pleased with that. It's certainly making us more money than the road delivery vehicles ever did. So a nice upgrade and change around there. And last time we also amended the stone and brick delivery lines so that they now head to a brand new station that we have at the industrial yard just outside of Uwajima rather than having all these middleman lines which were shipping goods backwards and forwards we've made it a little bit more direct and what I want to do today is continue in that vein by having the stone shipped in directly from the quarry in the mountains up in up in yeah up in the mountains near Iwanomori rather than having a handful of trucks which are bringing the stone down as it stands at the moment and that should make it a little bit more efficient as well. There's one of the rice freight trains I mentioned just departing the station there after dropping off a large shipment of rice to be converted into food. So good to see one of those make an appearance in the introduction. So let's just zoom out a little bit and just let's have a look at this line actually first of all, shall we? Yeah, as we can see, it is a profitable line. It's making more money than, as I said, the road delivery vehicles ever did. So that was a big step forward and a, uh, it's making it a, little, a lot better than it was before. So now if we head over to the new station at Uwajima, which is just here on screen now. As I mentioned, what we'd like to do today is to get the stone shipped in directly. We already have two platforms here as we can see, only one of them is being used, platform number two by the stone brick freight. Obviously once we bring in the stone directly, we're going to have to adjust those lines because the stone brick freight is no longer going to go here, or at least the stone freight isn't. And all we're going to have instead is these trains that are currently running this line are just going to be bringing in the bricks into Iwanomori and nothing else and we're going to have a separate set of trains bringing in the stone from the quarry to be converted into the construction materials. So let's make a start on that today. The first thing we're going to do is head over to the quarry up here at Iwanomori and we need to flatten off a nice large area because we need to put down a freight station. So let's get the terraform tools out and ready. Bump up the strength and the size. And we'll just pick a nice flat bit and we're just going to build ourselves a big flat area where we can put down our station without it causing too many terraforming issues. Now this is going to be a large station of course. It's going to be um, about 320 meters which is the maximum you can go for initially obviously you can expand them they are modular and i think that sort of area there should be enough i think it's also worthwhile just removing these assets here just so we can see what we're working with gives a nice open area we can see there's a bit of terrain issues here and there so we can very quickly just address those by using the smoothing tool there we go and probably just take off the edges here as well around where we've done our terraforming along this road here as well and just down into here to blend it in a little more naturally and there we go we have a nice open area and that should be plenty for us to work with putting down our station so we want a cargo station we'll have a terminus we're not going to be going anywhere else beyond although saying that we do have another quarry here and we could potentially start looking at this farm and we have a few towns down here as well so maybe we will want to pass through station now that I think about it. So let's do a pass through. 
320 meters. Even though we might be passing through eventually, we are going to stick with one platform for the time being. We can always expand it later on. And what the heck, we will go for catenary as well at this point. So we'll build the station just here. We need to give it that street connection, of course. So we want country roads. Doesn't matter about the speed of these roads because I can't envisage any vehicles actually running along here. And then if we connect that into there, that should give us an active connection. Yes, it does. So we've already got our connection to the quarry. Let's just quickly rename this to Iwanomori Quarry. Like so, so we know what it's handling and what its purpose is in the grand scheme of things. And now all we need to do is expand our train lines to include a connection into those lines that we constructed last time around. We don't want any tunnels at this point, I don't think. It's going to cause some weird terrain artifacts, but we can, of course, manually get rid of those with the terraforming tools available to us. So we'll allow that for now. And as I said, once we're com uh, once we finish laying down the tracks, that's when we'll come back and just get rid of this rather ver vertical, angular-looking bit of terrain that we have right there, which we don't want because it just doesn't look very nice. Right. So we want to head over towards where the freight line is over here. So the first thing we're going to do is bridge over this road here. Like so. Now let's get the terrain elevation map, mayor, map layer, not map mayor, on our screen. So we're at about 10 meters over here. That's a lot lower than I thought it was. What are we at up here? 46 so we need to drop off 35 meters or so to get down to there that shouldn't be too much of a problem we do we are we are doing this over a fair old distance and i think what we can do here is actually give ourselves a little strip of quad track just for these new lines to join into and while the gradient might be a little high it's not going to be two killer I shouldn't imagine got another bridge there that's fine yeah I think that'll be fine we can always put some powerful trains on here if we need to although when they're climbing this gradient they are going to be returning to the quarry so they're not going to have a full load so they shouldn't be as heavy so that really shouldn't be too much of a concern actually Right, we need to traverse this road here, of course, like that. And then we can bring these in just before the slip switch that we have, the diamond slip switch, just here. Wait for that train to clear off so we can see what we're doing. That's better. There we go. We need to move that signal because that could block the junctions there. So let's bring that signal back a ways. And we'll put that there instead. We'll have a signal here. The trains could block this road here, but that's that's fine. I'm not really concerned by that. And then we're going to need to signal up the rest of this stretch of track over towards the quarry. Not going to need far too or too many blocks over here. We're only going to have maybe two trains coming down here at the most for the time being. So I think just a handful of blocks like that, although no, not like that, because that would break everything. Just a handful of blocks like that, that's better. That's going to be enough for us. Now that we've got the train lines in, we can go ahead and not flatten. We can smooth off some of this here. How does that look? That looks better. I don't like the way the trees are growing on the, the steep landscape there. So what we'll do for that is just remove the uh, take the brush size down and just tidy some of those trees up along the edge of the rail line like so. Do it down here as well just to keep the rail line clear. There we go, that looks a little tidier. Wonderful. So now we can set up a line to service this 
quarry and that means we are going to have to adjust these stone brick freight trains as well but that's no problem so it's going to be a new line we're going from Iwanomori quarry into Uwajima exchange we're taking stone so we want a greyish sort of colour for this we want them to be fully loaded when they're at the quarry loading only the stone only unloading the stone and they're not going to be bringing anything back with them and we can name this the stone freight and this is Iwanomori to Uwajima there we go so now we can purchase the train for this as we saw when we connected the tracks together we have a fair bit of gradient on this stretch of track here so we're going to need something with a bit of power behind it so let's have a look what we have here shall we the class SU is powerful but the tractive effort isn't the best so it's going to take a uh, it's not going to be the best at leaving from a standing start. For example, departing the uh, the stations. I think we'll go for the China Railways again for this one. And I think we're only going to need one, I dare say. Then we want the gondolas. Make sure we colour these. So if we have 12, what does that do? Oh, it's still 50 and 50. I dare say that's going to be plenty. So let's buy two of those, 21 million for the two. Assign them to the line. And because we put this connection line in here, they can make their way down here into the station and then back again. What we can do now is the stone and brick freight lines. We can amend these. And in fact, we're not going to need as, I think, I dare say we're only going to need one of these. So we'll sell two, doesn't matter if they're loaded or not, not really fussed by that. Configure the vehicle, drop off all the gondolas and instead replace them with just nothing but a flat car with the side stakes. And we'll have ten of those, what does that look like? That's fine, absolutely fine. Modify that, we'll rename the line as well since it's now only a brick freight line. The stone is being handled by a different line. Brick Freight Iwanomori to Uwajima. There we go. We can also recolor that as well now that it's just purely bricks. Like so. What we can also do as well is sell all of these. And again, I'm not going to micromanage it to the extent that we're going to wait for them all to make a final delivery. Instead, we're just going to manage vehicles, select them all and get rid of them all in one go. We no longer need this, so let's get rid of that. Yes, I know the line isn't happy, but I'm not really fussed because the line is going home. There we go. Okay, so that's another road or another intermediate road delivery line removed and replaced with a freight service running on the rails. I do think, oh, in fact, this one might need adjusting now. If we just go to the line details here we now want you to wait for a full load and over here you are not loading anything anymore no nope, that's the wrong way around so here you're not loading anything you're just unloading the bricks and over here we want a full load and we'll only set them for a three minute wait time it's only one train it's not going to cause too many issues if he's waiting around too long especially as the other trains that are coming in and they are on different platforms anyway are just dropping off they're dropping off the stone just make sure they are on separate platforms no they're not they opted to use the same platform so let's just sort that out that's better now they're on separate platforms so they're not getting in each other's way apart from on this little interchange here this little junction but that's fine do a little bit more terrain modification around here where the terrain isn't looking the best there we go that looks a lot tidier here comes our first brand new stone freight train it's going to head to the station turn around and then head up to the quarry the second one should be not far behind in fact here it is now just using our little connection branch line here to access the brand new freight lines that we've been working on looks rather nice passing under the bridge on a bridge 
We've got bridges for days down here. Who's got priority here then? It's the new stone freight train, that's fine. How are we doing in terms of the amount of cargo waiting for these guys? Well, look at that, it's almost full already. In fact, what we probably want to do is put some cargo buildings on here just to improve and increase the terminal capacity. Can we squeeze any of these in anywhere? It doesn't look like it, but that's fine. So that's improved the, uh, the cargo capacity at this station nicely. Just move that little bit off there as well, that's better. Okay, so that's that taken care of. We'll leave that to do its thing and then we'll come back and check on it in a few moments. There is another potential line where we could do something very similar and that is the logging haulage line over by Wakayama or Yawatahama, I suppose I should say. If you remember when we set that up, we have trucks coming down from the mountains full of logs. They then drop off at the sawmill and the logs get converted to planks and the same trucks then head down into Iyawatahama and the planks are delivered to the, is it the goods factory? No, it's the machinery factory, isn't it? So we could look at changing that around. I haven't experimented with that yet. I, I mean, I'm sure it will be profitable if we do do it. The only problem is I've not looked at the landscape and how much terraforming it would require, nor have I experimented with the best routing options, and my days, Mima is popular. Look at this, 100, sorry, that's the wrong number, 233 people waiting for the Northern Shuttle service. Let's go ahead and manage, not that. In fact, we have the Class SU, which is a faster train, so let's see if we can swap it out, because he's only running the JNR 8620 at the moment. Let's quickly edit these. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is give them some extra passenger coaches, because they're clearly not keeping up as it stands. What colour are you? Is it the brown? Again, the colour blindness doesn't help here. If we double the capacity for a start, what does that do for our train? 59, 37 and 20. Well, let's see what you would look like with the Class SU. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's wonderful. I dare say we could get a couple more passenger wagons on there as well. Let's have a look. How far can we push this before it gets too silly? Uh, let's have a look at that. Six. Oh, that's not bad. What about with just the five? How's that? I think we'll go with the five for now. That's 95 capacity per train. That's a much more capacity, much better capacity than we just had previously. So, yeah, we'll go with that. The Mima Tsayo shuttle, which initially wasn't making us any money and I was concerned about its viability, it has now turned into a very popular service. And again, we can go ahead. What's the, what are you running there? Jesus, you've got an old train. Let's upgrade you, shall we? You can have the Class SU as well. And let's give you some more modern passenger carriages as well. So you're green. Is it that green? What the heck is that green now? What do we have here? The DL3000 VIT and the eagle of 22 very nice what if we go for four for this one should we have a look at this train I find it very amusing that i was concerned about how viable and useful this train service is going to be it struggled quite a lot in the in its early days but now it's making uh, yeah, it's making a name for itself. It's very popular. It's a profitable service as well. Wow, that's lovely and profitable. In fact, I dare say quite a few of our passenger lines need to have their locomotives upgraded as well. What trains are you running? Are you running the China Railways? If you are, that's fine. Yeah, we'll keep the China Railways. What about you, my friend? How are you doing? You've got the Class 89 100. Do you would you benefit from the new locomotive? I bet you would. 626251. Yeah, you're faster. You got a faster top speed. We'll not modify the amount of wagons you're hauling, though. I think you're fine. 
Yeah, 38, that's fine. And the Uwajima to Izumi Marchi Shuttle. We'll modify the loco, but again, we'll keep the amount of carriages as is. Like that, just to get us that extra speed. And same, what do you have? Oh, you have the Class S. So you could probably do the SU as well, just for the increased speed. Let's have a look. 62 in 75 seconds. Yeah, that's faster. There we go. There's, we've got a few more passenger lines as well. But we can leave those for now. I'm still uh, quite impressed by how popular this service is proving. We might need more than two trains on here. Look at that. 60 people waiting at what's that, F Futana. Not so bad up here as we can see. And then as we get a little further up to Matsuno, again, not looking too bad. We still need to put another line up to Izumi, and I don't think that's going to go anywhere else. I suppose you could have a little mountain ride over to Nomura. Or we could have a line from Mima into Nomura. Or we could have a bit of a loop service where it goes that way and that way. Possibilities are endless. Well, they're not, but... So while those passenger services bed in, let's continue on along our network and hop over to the next town and see if we any, any attention is needed over here. Here we are in Sio. Now we've just upgraded that one, so I think we're going that wasn't in any attention at the moment. The Yawatahama to Sio shuttle. It's not full, and we don't have too many passengers waiting. So I think for now it's going to be okay. Although we might want to just swap out the locomotive to give them the fastest possible train that we can provide. And that is a Class SU. 62 in 90 seconds. Yeah, it's a better, faster train. So we will give them the new locomotive. But we're not going to adjust how many carriages they are pulling. What are you waiting for? Why are you still sharing a platform when you have a spare right here? That does not make any sense. Go on to Terminal 2, please. There you go. Now you're not going to have to wait. I guess you're waiting for the Mima to Sayo train, wherever it is. Uh, it's coming here, yes, because all this is single-tracked, isn't it? That's the problem here. I suppose we could double-track it at this point. Yeah, why not? Let's get this double-tracked. So it's this line here. So tracks, yeah, we'll give them catenary. Why the heck not? If we wanted to, we could also use faster lines. But at the moment, none of our trains would be able to utilize it to its full extent. So we're not going to do that. And then you should be close here. Yep. Let's see now. Right, we're going to have to rework this because you're on the wrong side. Let's just take this back all the way to the station. And you can go in like that instead. And then we're going to need a diamond over here as well. There we go. That's level. And then put a few signals in here. And I think the rest should be quad tracked. Now we're double tracked here, but that's fine. So Sayo is looking fine. How are you doing over here, actually? Yeah, 90% for your bread, so that's okay. Eventually, you're going to want some fuel, but that's not urgent. We don't need to grow every town to its full extent. Yawatahama, how are we doing over here? Well, the bus service is uh, very crowded and very popular, as we can see. Train station's not too bad. Neither is the tram service over to Wakayama, so that's no problem. Loads of machines waiting. Oh, that's good to see. How many machinery freight trains do we have? We have two at the moment. I think a rate of 128... Shall we go for a third? Get that rate boosted a little. Manage vehicle. We'll, yeah, we'll go for a third. China Railways? Yeah, China Railways. They're fine. 
Everything else is looking okay down here. What about the fuel freight? Oh, it's only got a frequency of 69. So a rate of 69. That could be better. Or does it need to be better? Let's have a look. Yauta Harmer. Oh, it could be a lot better. They can take 211 per year. We're only giving them 69 on our trains. How many of those do we have? Is it two? Yeah, it's two. Let's give them a third as well. And what are you running? China Railways. Perfect. You're not overloaded, are you? No. Well, you know, there's nothing going off there anyway. And that's fine. So no overloaded goods stations at the moment. Oh, look at that. We have some high-rises popping up. Oh, that's lovely to see. Starting to modernise and move into the modern era. He says in 1930. And let's head back to Uwe Jima. Okay, here we go. I just want to have a look at the traffic in Uwe Jima. It's looking pretty good, actually. I have upgraded some more of these roads and increased the road capacity throughout the town. I've still got some of these old-style roads, so you may as well upgrade those for them. A large four-lane street. Yes, the traffic's looking fine in Uwe Jima. A little build up here and here, but nothing overly concerning. And these are traffic light controlled junctions, so they're probably just waiting for a signal change, which should be happening pretty soon, so that's fine. Over here, numbers are looking good. This one's looking a bit busy. Do we have new buses yet? I haven't checked for a while. No, we're still using the Gaggenhaus, and that's still the most modern bus that we have. Hopefully we'll unlock some new buses soon. We did unlock, I think it was a new tram. So at the moment these are the Moscow F. Yes, we do have the DL3000 VIT. And these carry 19 and do 19 miles per hour. Ah, they're slower and less capacity. The only benefit is, is these have a lower emission value, but I'm not too concerned by the emissions at this point, so we'll keep that as it is. No need to change those out then, we'll keep the Moscow Fs. How are all these other stations doing? I guess these are the last stops on a lot of these lines, which is why they're busy because by the time the buses get here, they're already full of passengers. So what we can do is we'll give each line seven buses. And that should assist on that front. I did have a comment about the positioning of some of the bus stops. And it's something I've never really factored in when positioning my bus stops playing this game. And it's a very, very good thing uh, to bear in mind that I'll basically what they, what, what they mentioned is sometimes if your bus stops are too far away from the nearest crossing and uh, it's not very efficient for the passengers because they've got to walk four mile to cross the road to get to the bus stop now if you go to we don't want to upgrade how, oh I see I can't remember how we see it is it there is a oh there we go if you go to place down a bus stop you can see we have a crossing point just next to the bus stop there. You see the, the line crossing the road with the marching ants or the the uh, perforated line crossing the road. That's where a, the residents are allowed to cross. So that bus stop does have a crossing right next door. So that one isn't a problem. Let's just check all of these. Like this one here, the nearest crossing point is over here as we can see at this crossing or this crossing here. So that's not too far for them to walk, so that's not too much of a problem. That one's near a crossing anyway, as is that one. If your buses, uh, bus stops sorry, are near a junction, then they're going to be okay, because they can cross at any junction, so don't worry about that. But if you have a bit where, say if we put one there, we might want to consider putting it just down here, and then it's be close to that crossing there that we have about a third of the way up the street. So I never really thought about that before, and it's actually a bloody good thing to think about, and something to bear in mind when it comes to your bus stop placements. So I just wanted to show you that, and you know, it might be something you want to bear in mind yourselves when you're putting your bus networks in your cities. So very, uh, yeah, something like I said, something that, that for some reason I'd never thought about it before. 
and it's absolutely true isn't it you know if they can get across the road to the bus stop a lot quicker you're gonna be in a much better position so yeah something to bear in mind all right let's uh, have a look how our new lines are doing so here are stone freight lines finances Ooh, not very profitable are you maybe it didn't make a full tooth i don't know we'll, we'll keep an eye on that the brick freight train so it didn't have time to get a full load in the three minutes but the line still might be bedding in so we're not going to do anything drastic and remove any of the wagons just yet but it's something to worth bear uh, keep keep in mind in fact let's just we're going to 1931 in a moment there we go what do we have russian class fd now that looked to me looks to me like a freight train let's have a look shall we let's have a look using the rice freight delivery line so we want to do both so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison on the speed oh he's a beast isn't he let's have a look what difference does it make 50 in 92 seconds do you know what let's do that it's a tiny bit slower but it just looks oh that's a oh i like that train that is a proper meaty freight train right there so some of our other services maybe even the in fact we'll leave that one for now because we don't know how this one might not even be that profitable at the moment but if you want to do a quick comparison see if it would be worthwhile so i'm going to go ahead and say it would be oh yes especially f because of the gradients that we've got around here what's the price for this one 1.3 million to run a year so it is more expensive as we can see ah what the heck let's do it we're on easy mode we're making plenty of money we've got 1.5 billion in the bank I'm not going to split airs over an extra 500,000 maintenance per year. I'm really not. Uh, yeah, wow. Uh, yes, I was going to say, let's just speed up the game a little. It's a bit jerky there. Uh, and just see how these stone lines are actually doing. I'm hoping they're going to be a bit more profitable than the chart suggested. But we shall see. And while that's running at full speed in the background... I'm going to think about what we want to do next. Now we could start supplying Ura, Kushima, and I believe there's one more, yeah, Miura, with the fuel, because we have the fuel production chain up and running, and that's working okay. And that would give us some more shipping action, because we would ship it into Kushima and to Miura. Obviously for Ura, it would just be, well, it could be shipped in. We are going to need some more port facilities, though, I think, if we want to do that. There's nothing down here, just on these little islands. So we have Yusu down here, which also needs fuel. We could have a little, start a little regional rail service down here that links into, do, 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 let's have a think about this, Iwanomori. So, you know, Iwanomori would become a, an exchange or a hub, and then we'd have a little regional service down here I won't be too fussed if we don't supply all of these towns with all of the goods that they require for growth it is nice to keep a few small towns on the map not every town has to be a huge metropolis like Uwe Jima is becoming in fact Uwe Jima and Izumi Marchi are not too far away from merging into one super town so if they start building along this bit of road here then you know where do you draw the boundary between the two they are getting close in fact I'd like to do that I'd like to turn this into one large city so we need to get some goods into Izumi Marchi which maybe that's what we'll do in the next episode then we'll start the goods production and get some of the goods shipped into Izumi Marchi and start growing that as much as we can all right so these lines have gone through and made a couple of deliveries each I believe let's have a look at oh that's better yeah that's going to be absolutely fine so yeah i think that's what we'll do in the next step so we'll just drop it back down to one times game speed now we'll look at getting some goods into izumi marchi where is the nearest goods supplier oh we only have one and it's right here okay so you need plastic which 
shouldn't be too difficult to activate. We've got all the fuel in the area anyway. And you need steel. Where's the nearest steel supplier? We have the one at Yautahama, which we are definitely... We know that's working okay at the moment. We have one up here by Kihoku. That's a fair old distance. Given that we already have a freight line over to Yautahama, I dare say having the steel brought in from Yautahama is going to be the best option for this. Yeah, we already have the infrastructure in place for that. We would need to handle the final delivery by some road vehicles, but that's okay. So yeah, we'll do that. In preparation for that, and given that we have some nice, powerful freight trains now, let's go ahead and upgrade our iron ore and coal freight trains to run the Class FD. At the moment, they have the China Railways, but as we saw, the FD is an absolute beast. Oh my god, look at that. That's just... <laughs> It's almost overkill. We fact, let's go ahead and chuck a few more cargo wagons on there. We've got the uh, the train can clearly handle it. If we chuck another five on, what does that do? Well, if we do that compared to the bog standard train that we have at the moment, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, about eight. Oh my god! Right, we'll we'll do that. We'll put the FD on and we'll chuck eight carriages on. And that's really, really going to help with the steel production, especially if we're going to start supplying two industries with the steel. We're going to need as much of the raw materials as we possibly can. So, yeah, this is a, a worth... And we'll do the same with the iron... Sorry, the coal freight trains as well in a few moments. There we go. Is that one of the coal trains? Indeed it is. We've got six of these. So the first thing we'll do is give them the new locomotive. And then we'll go through and chuck on extra wagons for each of these. And I dare say it'll be another eight per train. And that should keep the balance between the two throughputs roughly equal. Even if they are going to be obviously a bit higher. Proportionally they should be the same. That's two, four, six, eight. So we're going to 216 capacity. There we go. 55 million, what the heck, there we go, that's a lovely, lovely beastie train right there. So that should help keeping enough iron and coal flowing through here to get this steel mill able to supply two different industries. What's the coal for that 655, a rate of 655, iron ore 629, so they're roughly balanced, so that's good. Might change over time now that we have the stronger locomotive and more passenger wagon uh, more freight wagons than passengers you don't you wouldn't want to sit in there it'd be a bit dirty right so yes uh, we'll leave that for today as i said in the next episode we'll get the goods started and reproduced here and start growing izumi marchi just to see if we can merge these two towns into one super city in terms of the cab ride for today what do we want to hop on board I think we shall go with, ooh, we'll go with the Northern Service out of Mima. It's had a bit of love and attention today, it's been increased in capacity and it's had new locomotives chucked on, so why the heck not? Where's one of our trains? We'll go, yeah, we'll ride this, we'll ride it into the town of Mima. Let's just have a look at this train, we didn't really have a proper look at it when we put it in service. It's looking like a quite a dominant train now with a long well I say long a longer consist of five passenger wagons uh, 40 out of 95 so we're not quite full but what the heck so yes thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed today's episode uh, episodes this week might be a little bit few and far between because I'm working nights so finding the time to actually sit down and record and do all the editing and the likes uh, is a bit limited this week but next week's my week off so should be back to normal by then gotta keep those bills paid haven't we so yeah take care of yourselves ladies and gentlemen it's tata for now